How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mass of Beer Reviews, back with new brewery time in the form of Human Village. Uh, yeah, they're located out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's their wrong way. This is a India Pale Ale, 6.3% alcohol by volume. Nelson Savine, Centennial, Simcoe, Galaxy, and Citra up in this piece. Yeah, I've heard of these guys. I don't remember where I heard of them originally. Um, it might have been some kind of like, um, it might have been like Great American Beer Festival, something along those lines. Anyway, um, I just never had anything from these guys. I don't get down to Philadelphia way all that much. It's a bit too far out of the way. I'm closer to New York. You know, which way would you rather go? Anyway, um, but I saw this at a local distributor. Pick it up. We'll dive right in. It's just about a month old. <sighs> we'll see what's what. I mean, there's a lot of new school hops in there, and you have that little bit of centennial in there, so you assume there's going to be a bit of bittering going on in this sucker, too. We'll see what's what. Uh, Label-wise, it just, you know, looks like a U-Haul sign. There you go. Looks like a U-Haul sign, and uh, a little U-Haul van down there saying move on it. Got it. Um, yeah, other than that, not sure what else is going on. Yeah. One pint. I actually really dig the art design, though. Something about it. Kind of sketchy. Kind of cartoony. Kind of sketchy, like, as far as that goes, it looks really nice. I mean, it's got this soft, kind of, um, summery kind of haze to it. Very much kind of like pineapple juice, pear juice kind of thing going on. Just under pinky finger is white, could white could be head. Kind of crumbly edges, a, a kind of pillowy creaminess up in the middle. But yeah, I mean, it has this kind of soft, like, I'm going to be sweet and hazy, but I'm not going to be overly sweet. While well, at the same time, I might have a little bit of dryness, and I'll have this creamy kind of water nerdy mouthfeel thing going on. At least I hope that's the case. Let's dive in the nose. It's grapefruit juice, man. It's grapefruit juice all the way. There's a little bit of a hot pellet leaning into a little bit of a grassy greeniness. But it really is that grapefruit, which leads slightly into this soft kind of peach stone fruity kind of thing going on. I really dig it. Um, it smells familiar to me. I don't know what brewery kind of hits these notes or this hop combination from a specific brewer hits these notes. I'm getting kind of like trogsy vibes. I don't know if that's a little bit of placebo effect, you know, Pennsylvania and their brewery, but there's something about it because it has that thing, and I haven't mentioned it yet, that a lot of uh, the newer kind of trogs hazies have, which is this soft kind of ripened pear kind of vibe thing going on to it too. And that kind of makes me lean in that direction, but it smells quite nice. It smells like summer. Let's dive in. Cheers. Yeah, I mean, it's almost exactly what I wanted it to be. It does have that soft, creamy, pillowy mouthfeel. There's a little bit of bittering to balance on a not, balance off a not super sweet IPA. You're getting that grapefruit. You're getting that little bit of stone fruit. Kind of reaching on the peach thing there a bit, little bit, but I can talk myself into it. This is honestly probably a little bit too warm. This is probably right around 50 degrees instead of 45. I like these around 45 degrees. But I like this. I like this as a summer chugger. It's relatively low in ABV, sure. It's not sub 5%, but you're talking about 6.3%. The level of... What's the word I'm looking for here? Impact without being ostentatious, if that makes any sense. In that you're getting a kind of fruit juicy kind of thing from the hops, but it doesn't lean into that overtly, overly sweet, under attenuated kind of crazy sweetness that a lot of people tend to lean with with a lot of these kind of hazy beers. You get a nice bittering on there. Again, it's kind of a generic on pe uh, pellet kind of thing that leans into this kind of soft green, grassy green, slightly unkept lawn kind of greeniness. Um, and even though it does have that song of creamy mouthfeel, it finishes relatively crisp, rel relatively clean, at least for a hazy IPA. And actually, Get a little bit of dryness there. Makes you want to go back for more. What more do you want? Mm. I like that. Carbonation's on point. It's a really good beer, man. Honestly, first foray into a brewery, you never know what to expect. A lot of people tell you things. It's this, it's that, the other thing. I never remember anybody specifically telling me things about the brewery, but you hear words. Let's put it that way. You're not quite sure what they're going to be about. You know, a lot of breweries can go in a bunch of different directions. And when I sit here and kind of talk about beers on here, it's about what I like. I don't grade beers. I don't uh, give it an A minus plus, 93 garbage, whatever. Um, I just talk about whether I like it or not. And I like it. And I want more. Yeah, I can't wait to try more from these guys. Because this is the kind of hazy that, like, if I'm in a mood for chugging a couple hazies, this is really kind of where I wanted to be. Because it's not... 
it's not two by four to the feast in the sense of everything has to be like super sharp, the sweetness, the bittering, the fruitiness. Again, I like impactful beers, but a lot of them tend to get a little bit too heavy handed. That's not the case here. It's probably a little bit of a softer hand than what you'd expect even from this ABV level, but it drinks at its weight class. It doesn't drink like a lower end, a, a lowerish ABV kind of hazy. And it just gives me the things that really kind of get me all hot and bothered about um, IPA. So yeah. I dig it. Let's talk about it. Is it one of the better uh, hazy uh, IPAs that I've had as of late? Yes. Worthy of being in a conversation close to the top. Maybe not not Mount Rushmore status, but, you know, it wants to be there. I love the ambition. Valued availability. I should tell you because I bought it. I don't remember what I paid for this. I want to say I paid probably around like 16 bucks, 17 bucks for this. Eh, you know, hazy pale. That's probably kind of price accordingly nowadays, even though it's kind of poopy. But I'm not going to get too uppity because it is COVID times and breweries need the cash and leave you with if you like what we like this beer. If you like, um, you know, well done hazies, you're not afraid of a little bit of bittering. You like to run a gamut of an under ripened kind of fruitiness without this two by four to the face of sweetness and bittering and grain and dank and all those kind of things. And a lot of people might take that as a slight being like, well, you're just kind of saying it's not as impactful. It's not the case here. It's a little bit more adulty, a little bit more kind of broad in its impact as a opposed to sharp hits so if those are the things you kind of dig in beers and you'll dig this so there you go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out in the social media stuff beer massive if you want to check me out in the whole podcasting thing and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully enjoying a little philly haze right now hope we'll see you next time cheers <laughs>